Governor, let, let me ask you about, about the Republican presidential campaign right now. Uh, one of the latest polls that came out, a CNN poll, put Mitt Romney down eight points to the president in his home state of Michigan. Uh, there are a lot of Republicans right now that are worried that perhaps the campaign is slipping out of Governor Romney's hands. Are, are you worried about that? Not for any individual poll. I mean, I, I had uh, Russ Musson speak the other night, a pollster, and he had it about even. And he said, you know, things are going to go up and down in the next couple, two, two or three weeks, and people shouldn't worry about it. It's going to be an extraordinarily close election, according to his polls. And the, uh, the, the results are going to be determined by things you and I can't even anticipate. Are you comfortable with, with where the party has gone in its platform, in, in some of its rhetoric as well? We had the tape with Governor Romney that was uh, revealed, uh, where he essentially seemed to be writing off, if critics were to be believed, 47% of the American public as is, is moochers, essentially. Well, I, don't think, I don't think that's what he meant. I mean, I've, I've heard Governor Romney say some similar things. What he's talking about is the fact we're getting into a position in this country which is going to be very difficult to sustain. And that's where we're not, not getting the taxes in to pay for the benefits that you and I are all getting. And uh, somehow we've got to redress that balance. If we're going to keep all the entitlements rising, as they've risen tremendously over the last 20 years, uh, we've got to find sources to pay for them. And uh, we haven't done that in the past. That's one of the reasons we're in deep debt and one of the reasons, as a, as a country, we're in, we're in trouble. Talk to me as well in your capacity as, as the man who co-chaired the 9-11 Commission. Do you feel, and we've talked about this in the past, but it's been a year since our last conversation on this. Have we, have we as a country made any progress in learning the lessons and making ourselves safer? Yes. Uh, we've made a lot of progress. But a lot of progress has been on the old threat. The threat has changed. The threat is new. And we've got to make progress on the new threat just, uh, because that's what, that's what we've got to worry about today. The new threat is what? Well, a number of things. It's a different kind of attack. The terrorists are not in Afghanistan anymore. They're spread out, places like Somalia and Yemen. They're doing smaller, trying to do smaller attacks rather than larger attacks. We've got to be prepared for that. There's a whole new problems like cybersecurity. We could dis they could dis disrupt our whole grid in this country with, with a cyber attack. I'm not ready for it. We're not prepared for it. Whose fault is that? Uh, well, it's, you can blame, I, I hate to blame people, it's, well, it's the federal government, you can take the administration, you can the Congress, whoever. Congress had a bill to deal with it, didn't pass it. <laughs> so, um, you know, it doesn't matter whose fault it is, we've got to do it, we're behind on that. Uh, often the people who attack are better prepared than the people who defend. We are not yet ready to defend ourselves from a serious cyber attack, either in the private sector or the public sector, and that's got to change. Does American foreign policy have to change at all? Are we projecting ourselves too far out in too many places, too actively militarily? My own person, personal point of view is yes. Uh, I don't think we can afford to do what we're doing anymore. And I, and I think our, our aid is misdirected. I would like to see a lot more human, humanitarian aid rather than military aid around the world. I think when we have done that in the past, such as we did it in the largest nation in the world, not Muslim nation in the world, Indonesia, after the uh, tsunami, mm -hmm. you know what happened? 20% of the people before that attack felt favorably about the United States. After the aid came in and President Bush and Clinton came in, 80% felt favorably about the United States. So there is a way to win, an effective way to win hearts and minds. Oh, absolutely. It's a lot cheaper than war. Governor, we have to leave it there. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.